an object from interstellar space has been observed to visit our solar system. Oumuamua showed up again. Humans have always been fascinated by what lies beyond our home, but sometimes the unknown comes knocking at our doorstep for a visit. Oumuamua is an object of interstellar origin, and it puzzled scientists to no end. object is simply a piece of another solar system that was expelled and it has been traveling through interstellar space for... No matter how you look at it, Oumuamua is not normal. Some say it's made of hydrogen, others say it's made of nitrogen, while some scientists insist it's an alien spaceship. So what is it really? Join us as we explore the intriguing nature of this very first object to visit our solar system from the great beyond. ...aerial phenomenon and they released this draft report that indicates it is possible that alien ships have already visited our solar system. Scientists couldn't tell if this object was a comet or an asteroid, they first called it a comet, but then they assumed it to be an asteroid, until finally setting on a comet. But what made them go back and forth so much? Oumuamua was first detected in our solar system on October 19, 2017, thanks to the Pan-STARRS-1 telescope in Hawaii. The object was first named 1I2017U1, but the Pan-STARRS team insisted on giving it a more poetic name by calling it Oumuamua. Oumuamua is Hawaiian for a messenger from afar arriving first, this was obviously a reference to the interstellar and foreign origin of this object. This discovery marked a milestone for humanity, as we'd never had an interstellar visitor before, or at least we'd never spotted them, and spotting them isn't easy. Astronomers predict that objects like Oumuamua and Borisov pass by our solar system roughly once per year, but we just miss them. This is because these objects move extremely fast and are faint as well. It took the power of the Hawaiian telescope sitting on top of a volcano to detect Oumuamua. Pan-STARRS-1 is referred to by NASA as a space rock hunting powerhouse, and this telescope is perfect for seeing extremely faint objects. An advanced alien civilization. Astronomers were excited to discover the interstellar object last year. It was named Oumuamua. Pan-STARRS-1 marked a significant advancement in space observation technology. And only thanks to this are we able to look at faint objects like Oumuamua. This is because Pan-STARRS-1 is very efficient at surveying the whole sky, which is something that's very important if you want to detect fast-moving objects. And it turned out that we only had a window of a few weeks to get a good look at Oumuamua before it left our solar system. What did they find out? In these few weeks, scientists wanted answers, but they ended up with more questions instead. When scientists first saw Oumuamua, almost every telescope in the world pointed its lens to observe it. After all, it was the first visitor we've ever detected. But the more they looked at it, the more they got confused by it. The first task was to determine that this object was indeed interstellar in origin. How did we know for sure that this object was alien to our solar system? Possible alien ships have already visited our solar system. Specifically, Loeb thinks the first interstellar object spotted passing through our solar system in 2017. It could have easily been a rogue Kuiper Belt object or a comet with a very long orbit. Neil deGrasse Tyson explained this in very simple terms. He said that it is trivial to figure out if an object like this is not from our solar system, and all of that can be gleaned from its trajectory and speed. If an object is going very fast, it's likely that it's extraterrestrial. This is because the object is going too fast to be constrained by the sun's or any other celestial object's gravity. When Oumuamua flew by our sun, it was going at a mind-boggling 87 kilometers per second. That is 194,600 miles per hour, meaning it was way too fast to be contained by the sun's gravity. It was initially determined from its orbit that Oumuamua came from the general direction of the bright star Vega, roughly 300,000 years ago. Did this mean Oumuamua originated from Vega's solar system? It's unlikely because Vega wasn't in the same spot 300,000 years ago. When Oumuamua entered our solar system, it was only going at 59,000 miles per hour. There was no way it could have covered that much distance in such a relatively short amount of time. Scientists also determined the age of this object. Turns out it had been wandering the Milky Way galaxy for hundreds of millions of years before finally paying a visit to us. But even with this information, we're not exactly sure where this object came from, other than the fact that it is indeed interstellar. This object was truly alien and nothing like we'd ever seen before. Oumuamua's shape was completely bizarre. It was cigar-like, completely elongated. 
are roughly 100 to 400 meters long according to the Hubble Space Telescope. Ten times longer than it was wide, we had never seen any comet or asteroid with an aspect ratio like this. Its color was reddish, similar to other kinds of Kuiper Belt objects. And the most intriguing thing was that when it flew past our sun, it accelerated even faster than anyone could have estimated. And when it comes to estimating these types of things, Neil deGrasse Tyson says that we have a good handle on these tasks. We're proficient at calculating trajectories according to Newtonian physics. So, it turns out the pear shapedness is bigger than the height of Mount Everest above sea level. When something enters our solar system, we can take a look at its trajectory and make a solid estimation of how the gravity of all the objects inside our solar system will affect this object. That's what we did with Oumuamua, but our calculations came up short. There was one potential explanation for this. Oumuamua could be a comet. But scientists kept shifting from whether Oumuamua was a comet or an asteroid. But what even is the difference between these two? To put it simply, comets are icy while asteroids are rocky. Comets typically show acceleration when they pass by the sun. This is because gravity acts stronger on the object due to its close proximity. But that could happen to any object that gets close to the sun. The most important part is that a comet's speed goes beyond the influence of gravity. The ice on it sublimates, meaning the ice changes from a solid to a gas instantly, without going through the liquid stage first. All thanks to the intense heat and radiation of the sun. The gas produced from this sublimation escapes the comet's surface and shoots the object forward, changing its orbit slightly in the process too. And the best part is that this sublimation results in the comet ejecting a long tail of dust and gas, which is pushed by solar wind radiation. And that's exactly what happened with Oumuamua. It got a speed boost as it swung past the sun, the kind of speed boost you'd associate with a comet. This definitely confused scientists because they'd assumed that Oumuamua was an asteroid up until this point. But a simple change of description from asteroid to comet didn't even begin to solve the mysterious case of Oumuamua. Object is simply a piece of another solar system that was expelled and it has been traveling through interstellar space for... There were still questions left unanswered, and this is because with comets you'd see a trail, but Oumuamua had no such trail. Comet or Asteroid Oumuamua followed a bizarre trajectory as it passed through our solar system. It accelerated much, much more than scientists could have predicted, and this was the crux of the puzzle. If Oumuamua really was a comet, then where was the comet trail that you typically find when comets fly past the sun? And to make matters more confusing, there was no visible dust on Oumuamua either, and what could possibly explain its odd shape? Scientists say that Oumuamua looks like an asteroid, but it behaves like a comet, which is a very apt description of why this object is so strange. Ever since its initial discovery in 2017, scientists have been trying to explain the bizarre nature of this object, from its shape to its trajectory and even to its origin. But the novelty of an extraterrestrial object, one of interstellar origin, meant that scientists were more than happy to come up with a variety of theories and conduct rigorous research to truly find a satisfying answer that resolved all mysteries and questions. This led to theories like the solid hydrogen iceberg theory, which presents the assumption that Oumuamua is made up of nothing but solid hydrogen. This hydrogen would sublimate into gas as it got closer to the sun and would push the object forward, like a natural ion engine. Another theory suggested that the object wasn't cigar-shaped but disc-shaped instead. They proposed this because of the peculiar way Oumuamua accelerated past the sun as it flew by. One theory presented the notion that the odd acceleration was not because of comet-like behavior, but because of solar radiation pressure, which is when the photons from the sun impact an object and propel it forward. But for this to work, the object's density would have to be extremely low. And while Oumuamua does have a unique shape based on our current understanding of this phenomenon, it shouldn't have been possible for this object to accelerate so much just with the power of sunlight alone. Furthermore, this is a phenomenon that is typically considered when talking about spacecraft, like a solar sail. But solar sails are a man-made object that is artificial in origin, not something natural. Could Oumuamua have been artificial, something created by another species? While this prospect might seem far-fetched, some scientists seriously considered the possibility of Oumuamua being an alien light sail created by an intelligent extraterrestrial civilization to scout our solar system. There is one researcher in the scientific community that is famous for presenting such theories. His name is Professor Avi Loeb, 
He's a theoretical physicist that doesn't shy away from theories about extraterrestrial origins. Holding it in my hand, it's the first time that humans hold in their hands material from a big object that came from interstellar space, the first time in history. Perhaps motivated by a passion to truly prove or disprove the existence of life beyond our planet, he's the person that will actually entertain these kinds of hypotheses and seriously consider them. Claims like these are met with skepticism most of the time. This is because most scientists seek to answer unknown phenomena through other theories rather than just going straight to extraterrestrials, saying that there might be more plausible explanations due to complex physics or chemical interactions that we don't properly understand rather than intelligent life controlling the space object. Bearing that in mind, let's take a look at Avi Loeb's theory. Alien spacecraft? The real shape of Oumuamua is still up in the air. Some say it's cigar-shaped, while others say it's pancake-shaped. But NASA claims that it is indeed cigar-shaped. But this wasn't properly established back in 2018. There was a chance that Oumuamua was actually disc-shaped or disc-like. Some renderings even depict this object in a more disc-like manner. This would also mean that Oumuamua could only be observed from specific angles while it traveled through our solar system. We might have missed out on the details of its proportions because of this. So based on these assumptions that Oumuamua was indeed pancake-shaped, in October of 2018, Professor Avi Loeb and Dr. Schmel Bayerly presented a theory that capitalized on the bizarre shape of this object. The odd shape of Oumuamua could be explained off as it being artificially made. This would be for practical reasons. Solar sails or light sails made by humans are very flat and reflective. This is so they can have a wide surface area to reflect as much sunlight as possible to propel themselves using photons that impact their surface. This is somewhat similar to sails on a boat. About solar sailing. Now, most spacecraft get pushed through space with some kind of rocket fuel. The momentum of the fuel going this way pushes the spacecraft. Where these flat light surfaces try to capture the most wind possible, a solar sail tries to capture the most solar radiation possible. This isn't a new concept either. Solar radiation pressure has been an observed phenomenon since the 1600s, when Johannes Kepler noticed that comet tails point away from the sun, and he rationalized that it was the sun that was causing this. He made the comparison between celestial winds and sea breezes that sailboats use. Even in the 1960s, spacecraft designs took this factor into account to compensate for the change in trajectory and orientation the sunlight would cause. This was the crux of Professor Loeb's theory, that Oumuamua was a light sail designed by intelligent alien life, and that the solar radiation pressure caused by the sun was what propelled it at such high speeds. The study said that the way Oumuamua's trajectory shifted from its estimated orbit, and its odd acceleration perfectly aligned with it being a light sail, and even the way it entered our solar system was like how a scout from another species would enter it. Professor Loeb thought it was too much of a coincidence that it flew by Earth after coming close to the Sun, given that Earth is the only planet that houses life, an alien probe would be interested in observing it. This theory seems somewhat plausible at the time, because other theories that explain the odd nature of Oumuamua didn't satisfy experts. The sudden acceleration was explained off by the scientific community as comet-like activity, but the professor insisted that we should have seen a trail and a spin. Despite this, the study was met with a mixed response even after going through peer review and being accepted for publication in the Astrophysical Journal Letters. Professor Loeb's claims caused controversy among the media and scientific community, some questioning why such an esteemed scientist like Professor Loeb would even bother entertaining such hypotheses, completely dismissing the theory in the process. Neil deGrasse Tyson said that Professor Loeb conducted a lot of research to arrive at this conclusion, and while Neil is excited about alien life too, he's not on board with proposing aliens as the first solution to anything we don't properly understand. Neil goes on to say that while Professor Loeb did a lot of research, he didn't do enough. In the face of this controversy, Professor Loeb published a book that dived into more detail on this theory. The reason why he presented the theory in the first place was because of his involvement in Project Starshot, which was a program that aimed to create a spacecraft that could reach Alpha Centauri within a space of a human lifetime. The concept craft was a light sail, as small as a mobile phone, which would be propelled by a 100 gigawatt laser to achieve speeds close to the speed of light. Professor Loeb was still fresh off working on Project Starshot when Oumuamua arrived, which meant that the theory of Oumuamua being a light sail felt obvious to him. Professor Loeb wasn't jumping the shark with this theory either. It was only after eliminating the other possibilities and conducting careful calculations that he arrived at this theory. Even so, scientists weren't convinced and other theories of Oumuamua were deemed more plausible.
Other theories One theory in 2020 proposed that Oumuamua was actually a hydrogen iceberg made out of solid hydrogen, where Oumuamua would be propelled like a rocket as the material sublimated. But the likelihood of such an object forming in the first place using processes we currently understand would be very unlikely. And even if it did form, it wouldn't be able to survive the hundreds of millions of year-long journey that Oumuamua took. Another theory in 2021 said that Oumuamua was a nitrogen iceberg instead, saying that it is actually a fragment of nitrogen ice which broke off from a Pluto-like planet in a distant star system. We didn't see a tail on Oumuamua because of its nitrogen form. This was down to the fact that detecting nitrogen gas was difficult for our telescopes at the time. This theory seemed very promising at first, but it wasn't compelling enough. The theory assumed that these types of nitrogen icebergs would originate from Pluto-like planets like Neptune's moon Triton. But we've calculated how many more Oumuamua-like objects likely exist in our entire galaxy. Me ...because this was the first time we had uh, confirmed that an object was coming in from outside of our own solar system. This is the first thing we ever saw. And the amount we've estimated is quite high too high for it to be caused entirely by exoplutos. There would have to be a lot of exoplutos to account for the number of Oumuamua-like objects in our galaxy. But this would mean that the galaxy would need a few thousand times more mass than it currently has. But some scientists argue that Oumuamua-like objects are actually sparse in our galaxy, and that this nitrogen ice theory holds up if you use the more modest number. Either way, this other theory in 2023 is one that's regarded by scientists as the most compelling. This one is known as the hydrogen outgassing theory. The basis of this theory states that Oumuamua is a comet with an odd composition. It's composed of hydrogen gas that it gathered from cosmic radiation over the course of millions of years. The gas would be trapped inside Oumuamua's ice layer, and upon encountering the sun, the gas would be released, accelerating the object in the process. And the reason why we didn't see a trail was because molecular hydrogen doesn't have the momentum to pull a lot of dust along with it. Molecular hydrogen is lighter than the molecules typically found on comets like carbon monoxide or carbon dioxide. This theory offered an explanation that wasn't particularly exciting or exotic, but it did provide a reason for Oumuamua's behavior according to information we already know. But that begs the question, will we ever learn more about this object? Currently, Oumuamua is too far away to gather any new meaningful data from it. We'll have to rely on the information we obtained during its short visit in 2017 to craft any new theories or wait for a new Oumuamua-like object to pass by again. But who knows, maybe our technology will improve rapidly, allowing us to observe Oumuamua again despite its distance, or we'll be able to retroactively determine objects as being interstellar, like with the space fragments that fell into the Pacific Ocean off the coast of Papua New Guinea. But let us know what you guys think about Oumuamua's origin, and if we'll ever encounter such an object like this again. Stay tuned for more next time.